What is up everybody and welcome back to another video. I am The Hobbyist and today I'm going to be showing you how to make an entertaining, fun and challenging RC crawler course right in your backyard. So without further ado, let's get right into it. To build your crawler course, you might need a couple of things, including a garden cart or wheelbarrow of some sort, garden gloves or leather gloves to protect your hands, a hand saw or a power saw, a drill with a variety of drill bits, a hammer, an abundance of old screws or even new screws, some small pieces of scrap wood, some larger pieces of scrap wood, some old logs or other pieces of old wood, and some rocks. So I'm not going to guide you on how to use these tools because if you don't know how to use them then there are much better guides on YouTube on how to. But I'm going to go over the elements of this track and then show you why each element is important into making the track challenging but yet fun. So at the beginning of this track there is a huge pile of rocks. Now this is an interesting mark because I mean, first of all, they are rock crawlers, so you have to have a rock element. So if you can find some big stones or even some smaller stones around your house or even in the ground, and you can pull them up and create a pile like this for your crawlers to climb. Now, if you see on this track, it shoots off into three different possible areas to drive. Yours doesn't have to have this, but mine does, to make things a bit more interesting. If yours has multiple ways to go, it always makes it more fun so after the rock pile, you can go three different ways. The first way is up these long tree logs that go up and you have to balance on these two logs and then eventually turn and get into this junction. If you go this route, you also have to balance on these logs, but it's thinner. Then you have to go get over all of these logs and then balance on another set of logs and you'll arrive at the same junction. If you go this way, then you have to balance on these logs and go to that junction. In between these two, there is this log, so if you try to climb over, you could potentially climb over like that. Now, if you arrive at this junction, there's only really one way, so you have to climb these logs and make it up over here. Now, this has chunks of wood screwed into it that will catch your tire and force you to stay on point. As you come up, you have to get this and then get some wheel speed to make it over this, otherwise this will catch your skid plate. And then you basically have to precision drive over this without letting your tires fall into that hole or anywhere else until you get to this point. By this point you should be good at staying on two logs. So you've got this much wider log and this much thinner log and you've also got more pieces of wood. If you try to avoid them, chances are they're going to catch your axles, so it's better just to go over them. After that, you move along and there's more logs to bump over. After you reach these logs, it is either a hard 90 degree turn into this section of track or a very difficult 180 degree turn up to here. There are different logs to throw you offline. And then there is this area which is designed to catch your axles, so you have to be careful going up. And then here at this corner. Once you reach this corner, there is a homemade teeter-totter. I made this by putting two pretty thick logs in, drilling holes through them, and putting a dowel through. And I also used stakes, staked them into the ground, and then screwed the stakes into the board to hold it steady. But as you can see, it goes up, and when I let go, it returns to its first position. That's because of this little piece of wood that is used as a counterweight, so it always returns to its first position. After you go past here, you have this small section of logs, and then this. Now this has proven to be a very difficult um, obstacle on this course, because these logs are spaced in such a way that you have to bounce over them, but they are slippery. This bark has nowhere to grip on. On top of that, you have these logs here that are trying to throw your wheels off center. So. It takes some finesse and some, quite honestly, luck to get up this obstacle. Once you've made it up this obstacle, you can see there is the junction from before. You can go down this route. This route tests your articulation. So you're going to be articulating through here, and then you have to catch this board right here, and then get off of this one quickly so that you don't over articulate and flip over. As you come along here, you then balance on this log and move down here where there is a small rock section and it brings you back to this area. 
So that's my crawler course. Now you can pretty much go any direction that you want on this course, which makes it really nice and it keeps it fresh when you're crawling on this course. But what makes it so interesting? Really, when it boils down to it, it has variety. There is rock sections here, there is areas that test your driving balance, there are areas that test your turning. As you move along, there are areas that test your raw driving power, there are areas that test your articulation, we've got areas that test how much you're paying attention. There's fun areas like this that aren't really challenging, but they're still fun to get over. And then there's areas like this that really test your crawler's capability and your driving. And there's these little boards like this, just so that there's not a second where it's easy. Because too hard of a course, and people don't like it. But too easy of a course, and it gets boring quickly. So you have to find a happy medium when you're building your crawler track. Anyway guys, that's going to do it for the video. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you did, please hit that like button, subscribe, and leave a comment in the section below for what videos you'd like to see next. But thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.